And we're back. Some more oxygen not included. And today, today we're going to build a nuclear reactor. But first, I want to put down a quick gym. Now, the reason being, a couple of our pawns are just a little bit too slow. Namely, Chris here, one of our newer recruits, they don't have exosuit training yet, meaning every time they put a suit on, well, they slow to a crawl. And the same with Uda George. Also, I've been thinking when it comes to get, knocking out all the achievements, we do need to hire at least 20 dupes. If we're short, well, we need 20 dupes to hit one of the achievements. Uh, we've knocked out 100 tune-ups on our power generators, which is actually excellent. Ah, here it is. Have at least 20 living duplicates living in a colony at one time. So we need to get another higher in another four, so we might as well start planning ahead for that. I'm thinking we're going to take our old uh, little pip ranch and turn it into a training facility. Just uh, swap out all the floors for granite first. Well, waiting for this to complete, we've got a gate activation, and while I was tempted by Harold over here for operating and rocketry, they look like a solid bone, there is some larva egg showing up. Now, we don't need slicksters just yet, and plus, the amount of oil you get out of slicksters is absolutely minuscule. I mean, it takes 20 kilos of carbon dioxide to keep them fed for a day, and they'll produce 10 kilos of oil. And even then, if you take that oil and refine it into petroleum, you're looking at losing half the mass. So you get maybe 5 kilos of oil a day, assuming you can provide them with 20 kilos of carbon dioxide, which honestly, we would struggle to feed one of these. But I'm thinking we dump them in here. It's hot enough that it'll keep them warm, though, and our duplicates won't have to go in after them. They will contaminate the system with some oil, but we can... Yeah, you know what? It'll damage the desalinator, but I think we can live with that. And there it is. Our gym is now fully operational and both of our little dupes are running around on it like crazy. Now the priorities on this are, this are set to 9. The priorities of the two dupes in question are also both maxed out on operating. So that means both of them will come along to the highest priority machinery task. And that is all of these that are at level 9. They won't go near any of, the, any of this stuff over here like the metal refining and stuff like that because this will always be available considering they are the only people allowed in. So the only people that come in here are the trainer, the people who need training, and this will always be their highest priority task, meaning we can train them all up. Now, the reason we send them in here is this will max out both of their machinery skills and it will also max out their athletics, meaning they can run faster, and then once we get them up a few skill points, we can throw them into exosuit training, and then we can let them out of here to actually become productive members of the colony. But until they get exosuit training, they're pretty much useless for us. Now, down here, we have expanded on our atmosphere docks, and it's time we finish coring this place out. And oh my god, how is that flooded again? That is... Mm. I'm going to have to do something about the carbon dioxide in here. I don't know if I have to increase the temperature, maybe, or... Mm. You know what? We'll find out in a minute. We'll just mop this up for now, let everyone back in. I've been keeping people out of here to stop them getting stung. If there's people in here at the... when you load up the game, they will immediately get stung to death by everything around. That bug still exists. Guys, yep, come on, get in here. Well, that's a horrible, horrible mess over there, but we'll worry about it later. For now, we need to clear out this area for our nuclear reactor. So I'm thinking we dig across just like that and get as far across there as we possibly can. While we're digging through here, we let out a big pocket of carbon dioxide, but that's okay. We're going to let that carbon pocket of carbon dioxide run into the, the beaters down here and they will basically soak it up. They consume 100 grams of carbon dioxide per second, which means... They're just a massive carbon sink for no cost. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I think they want us to knock them out and then go harvest the beta hives while they're asleep. But they literally consume carbon dioxide so quickly you'd have to run in and do it really fast. So, no? Never mind, I, I usually just hold that until I got atmospheres. Plus, you, you wouldn't really be going around building a, a nuclear reactor until you got your hands on Atmo suits anyway, so I'm not sure what the, the whole purpose of it was, but no, never mind. It's done now. That should get rid of most of the carbon dioxide in this area, slowly but surely. Now, the only thing we're left with down here is, well, chlorine and oxygen, and we'll have to do something about that chlorine, because it's starting to contaminate everything over here. To fill this area in, I'd like to dig down as deep as we can to try and, before we put in our reactor. So I'm going to put in a layer of tiles across this abyssalite. Now, I don't want to expose this abyssalite because it's incredibly hot. It's 1300C, and it will superheat the gas or any liquids that are touching it. So let's just sort of diagonally build those blocks. In fact, we'll make those a priority six. And we're not even going to make them out of anything too uh, insulating. It's, it's on top of abyssalite, so whatever you put in there should be grand. Uh, what we're going to do, or I'll try and demonstrate here before we get around to it, is we're going to stick steam turbines across here, about five of them. Uh, have our nuclear reactor up here somewhere, and it'll generate all of the steam that'll feed into the steam turbines that'll generate us the power. But while we're waiting for those to get done, we do have a printing pod activation. 
you know I am liking the look of Mima here. Namely because, well, the doctoring, they've got a plus three in medicine, they're also a caregiver, and we kind of do need a full-time doctor considering the amount of diseases we're going to be facing. So, please welcome to the team, Arctic Fox, which kind of works for the character, actually. All right, Arctic Fox, we're going to make sure you're immediately confined to over here. We want to make sure that you are doing all the training necessary to get up to speed. While Arctic Fox gets on with their job, we are going to head down here and sweep this place up. This is where we're going to be putting in the nuclear reactor, and we need to clean this place out. Uh, the... Yeah, the betas have, done it. betas have done a really good job of taking out most of the carbon dioxide. There's very little left in this area, thanks to them. One thing I've decided to do, just to clean up the place a bit more, is I'm going to stick in some gas pumps here, and we're going to get rid of everything. Chlorine, carbon dioxide, the whole lot. It's got to go, because it keeps flashing to liquid, then gas, and back again, and it's really annoying me. It's just bugging me at this point. So we've stuck in some gas reservoirs up here, we're going to stick in some gas pumps down there, and we're going to just extract a lot of it. Get rid of it all, not, and then I won't have to worry about it anymore, because it is kind of getting on my nerves. Oh, at the same time, we've stuck a canister emptier down here. All the oxygen canisters that end up lying about the place. This is to do with the mechanics for atmosuits. When an atmosuit's durability wears out, it just sort of drops onto the ground there, and all the oxygen that's in it also drops onto the ground in a canister. And you end up with hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of kilos of oxygen over a long enough period of time, ending up just dropped on the ground. So instead, we're just releasing it all down here, namely because the oxygen pressure is below two kilos down here, so why not? Why not pressurize the place and force the gases down? It'll make it a little bit easier to clean the place up. Now, uh, where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Finish off this little jury-rigged coal generator setup, then dump all of this random gunk from over here over to there to get it out of the way, and then put in the nuclear reactor. Easy peasy. After a little bit of messing about, we managed to clean out most of the gases down there, and I feel an awful lot better about that. Though there's still a whole bunch of liquid chlorine down there that we should really mop up at some point. Ugh, this place is a huge mess. All right, now we just gotta take, do a giant sweep command. Take all of that stuff and bring it over to this automatic dispenser. We've set this to priority level 3, sweep only, and it basically takes anything. Uh, and let's make sure they're all going there. Where, where are you going? Oh, the uranium, though. The uranium ore is going to get swept over here. That's going to get dumped into this section where uh, all of the bees can go nuts on it. There's, what, 288 kilos? Each one of those is, oh, 300 kilos. You are 288. You are 300, 288. Dear Lord. 288 and 288. So let's say there's about 250 in each one, that's, oh, 1 1.5 tons of uranium, actually more. That's more than enough to run our reactors for a really, really long time. Uh, just uh, let's finish this off, make sure that's good, and sweep all of this up. As the crew start in here, I think we'll have a quick check up on Martinez here. Martinez has been especially picked. He has been picked by the gods of, oh, never mind, they've gone to get food. You know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll let you come back later. Every time they go in there, the bees take a special liking to them. They all like to hug Martinez. Well, all the bees specifically from this one. And they have done ever since we loaded up the game today. I'm thinking some kind of bug happened on load, so now no matter if they're wearing a suit or not, they'll just get attacked by these bees. It's uh, mildly hilarious, but also kind of annoying. We keep having to send them to the medical cot. We have managed to clear this entire area out. We are ready to start the nuclear reactor at last. At the same time, I have brought in a whole bunch of storage bins and loaded them up with sedimentary rock. Now, the reason I'm using sedimentary rock is, well, we're running out of igneous. We dip below 100 tons there for a while. We're feeding granite to our stone hatches. Sedimentary is our most plentiful rock. And while it's not the best insulator or the... Well, actually, it's pretty terrible at everything in general. It's still good enough for our needs. So let's just use it. And we've brought 80 tons of it down here, so it should make it faster and easier to build. At the same time, I'm thinking we do a quick save load right now. The reason being, everyone's out of this biome, and I'd like to stop having to send Martinez to the hospital. They're getting sick of getting stung all the time. But we do have one blueprint to choose from, and it's a doozy. Max here, operating, supplying, and suit wearing. And just to sort of point out where those are on the, the tree here. Uh, so this is suit wearing, which is these two. Operating, which would be these three. And supplying, which would be these. Meaning they could become an exosuit wearing mechatronics engineer. And the only thing that wouldn't be giving them a mood bonus would be the rocketry piloting. Everything else they would have a little bonus for doing. So I'm thinking, yeah? Yeah, we're definitely going to hire them. That is a beautiful duplicate. Uh, only downsides is they're a pacifist, so they can't attack stuff. Who cares? They get a buff to strength, so they can carry a little bit more. And they're germ resistant, so they're less likely to get food poisoning. Hell yes. Please welcome to the team, Heavy Metal Pie. All right. Right, some of these names are starting to repeat again. Uh, the, the lottery keeps bringing up the, the same name sometimes. 
All right, let's go. Wait, come on. Let's go have a quick reload and then we can start on our reactor. This here is going to be the start of the reactor. We're going to have five steam turbines down here, another five up there. That'll give us the 10 steam turbines necessary to eat all the heat. I'm going to base this on one of my older designs, though. You have to make a few adjustments based on the amount of radiation we're going to be dealing with. Also, yeah, you can't just leave these things wide open anymore. I used to use them for mass crop farming, but we need to be a little bit more strategic if we want to do this correctly. As we have been slowly grinding our way through that, some new printables are available. And, yep, yeah, it brought me over to this planet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, nope, what we want is this gateway. Thank you very much. And I was just been looking here. We've got supplying rocketry and operating. That's actually the same as the last one. They're a mouth breather, but, you know, nobody's perfect. And as well as that, they've got super hard, super duper hard digging just built in. Yes? I mean, yeah, why not? We'll grab them. So please welcome Scott Oppenheimer to the team. They're going to take more than their fair share of oxygen, but that's okay. Once we finish this and got this up and running, we're going to go around to setting up a proper oxygen production facility. And let's get them running in the gym. Our gym rats are hard at work. Soon they will eventually become... Productive duplicates. What's your athletics of 10? Your athletics is 5. Uta George, athletics 9. Heavy Metal Pie, athletics 1. Ooh, and Scott off. Yeah, well, okay, they're, they're incredibly new. Once they hit about like, athletics 15, we'll let them out of there. For now, though, we have got to finish this sucker off. With some priority building, we've got 10 steam turbines down and a nice power spine connecting them all together made out of heavy watt conductive wire made out of cobalt. We have been building a lot of cobalt up here. How much cobalt ore we got left? We got about 16 tons. You know what? Give me another 10 tons of cobalt ore or co refined cobalt. That stuff is very, very handy. Uh, in here, in under, was it utilities? We're going to want a thermal actuator made of steel right about there. That's the steel liquid pump right about there. And then we're going to need to put in, ooh, let me think. I think I put that ladder in the wrong place. Yep, I did. Damn it, we'll put that ladder there. That's actually going to become a wall. Or do we need it to be a wall? Actually, we don't even need it to be a wall. Well, we'll leave that ladder there. And then we placed in an awful, awful, awful lot of stuff here. All right, uh, let me try and explain this, and hopefully I can explain it well, because I, it, it even looks like spaghetti to me. This here is going to be a cooling loop, so there's some regular little metal pipes there. Those metal pipes are radiant so they're going to be able to drop off their chill through there and they get chilled down in this aqua tuner and there'll be a little bit of control on that this here is going to remove any nuclear waste that ends up in the bottom of our reactor that nuclear waste we're going to end up pumping into space that's going to be a really long pipe run wow that's going to be a huge long pipe run but for now let's just get all the uh, the basics in place it's going to be a while before we get to fire this up next up we get to stick down the reactor after all of this time and prep work, and wow, that is a very cold biome. All right, now we want to stick this right up at oh, cobalt. Yeah, we'll use cobalt. We have plenty of that stuff lying around the place. I think that is perfect. The center of this is where all the water or the steamy water and radioactive waste drops out. So we want that all to drop down here. Reminds me, we should stick in a temp shift plate. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Granite should do perfect. In fact, we'll stick a couple of them there to help drain all the heat out of the waste and things. And oh. We need to put water in there. We need to fill this place up with water, so never mind. Let's go get ourselves some, uh, mm, yeah, a lot of clean water. We're going to need about six tons of this stuff to get the necessary six tons of water. Well, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five tons of water. We're going to fill up the bottom of this. Uh, we are going to bring the water all the way from over here. We have two water sieves that filter polluted water, so that, well, it rotates through our base to cool it down. It, otherwise, the Drekos have a tendency to overheat the farm tiles and stifle the mealwood. So we basically just used a few radiant pipe segments here and there, and then rotated around before sending it down to get turned into oxygen. So we'll just break off another spur. There's actually one here to go for more for a water tank for our science. One spur that goes off here to feed our bristle blossoms, and then another spur that's going to come down here and drop it right into this tank. Which reminds me, we should put in. Hmm, we should put in an automation switch. Excuse me. That's going to take a while before all the water gets in there. In the meantime, we might want to start sealing this up and turning the whole place into a vacuum, getting all that nasty oxygen out of there. To do that, we're going to need to put in a liquid lock, and I was thinking... Actually, we can hold off on that for a minute. Naphtha is pretty much the only thing we can use. Normally you'd new, use crude or petroleum, but... Well, we don't have access to that, and the best thing, best thing we've got 
is, well, NAPTA, of which we have 19 tons of plastic already. So, yeah, pretty cheap. This should be fairly quick and hopefully painless. Okay, it's a bit hot, but that's fine. Uh, we're probably going to need a second one now that I think about it, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to need to be able to fill up the liquid lock itself. So, I'm thinking second one? Yeah, why not? Second plastic one. We're, we'll find a use for the NAPTA one way or the other. That gives us 1,600 kilos of NAPTA. Barely cost us anything at all. And down here, we've just about actually filled this up. We're up to how many? 900 kilos. Once we hit about 1,000 kilos per tile, we should be good to seal that off. And that actually, if we check that now, yep, that NAPTA is going to hold that chunk there. That should work just perfectly at holding out any liquids. Uh, you should also go there. Great thing about NAPTA is it piles up to about 30 or 40 kilos. And that means that even if a duplicate is passing through this without an atmosphere, they can't accidentally breathe out and push the liquid out of the way. That happens with drip locks. But the, uh, the drip sizes of NAPTA is just so, vi it's so viscous and the drips are so big, it's impossible for that to happen as far as I'm aware. Uh, oh, what's going on? That should have stopped. Uh, please tell me that it... Well, there, there you go. You stopped. Excellent. Now, when that filled up, we will close that off there. When it comes to draining the air out of here, we're just not messing about. We're going to put in five full-size gas pumps. We're going to throw down a, well, four, four coal generators because they're just so handy for putting power somewhere. And then once this is finished, we'll have so much power coming from this, we'll never have to worry about power for a very long time. All right, uh, this is going to be an awful lot of construction, but I realized we've sort of limited our way to get into the back of this area here. When, when we're done, as in when this reactor is sealed in, how are we supposed to get from this side over to this side? I think we're going to have to come in across the top. So this little liquid tank we had uh, designs on building, I think it's all going to have to be squished up to about here. Uh, there's so much ice in there, though, already, like several tons of this stuff. I think we just sort of, yeah, we'll brick it in. We'll brick it in and we can deconstruct it from the top or something. Just that way we can get across the top of the reactor, at least. Oh, and we're going to have to move it up this way as well. This is going to be messy. While we were waiting for this to complete, we ran into a minor bit of a problem. Yeah, this eventually overheated. The water coming from our salt water tank has eventually hit above the 75 degree mark. This stuff only goes up to 75 C before it eventually starts uh, breaking. We got to rip this all out and replace it with steel uh, as soon as possible. Is everyone allowed out? Yes, they are. Immediately start deconstructing all of that. We got to replace the whole thing with steel and then, well, restart the whole thing. The problem is if you look at gases here, yeah, we're going to basically break this thing a whole bunch, but it's fine. It's fine. So long as we can get this back up and running in a reasonable time frame, it should be okay. All right. Reasonable time frame, people. Come on. Come on. Are you three of you doing it? Come on. Get on it. Get on it. Okay. Ooh. I think we're going to... Yeah, we'll get a little bit of element damage until that gas gets sucked out, or the oxygen in there gets sucked out, but that shouldn't take too long. A little bit of element damage never hurt anybody. Well, okay, maybe some hydrogen generators, but not too badly. Ooh. All right. Where were we? Uh, yes. Dismantling the pipes that brought in the water, putting in the gas piping, putting in all of the gas pumps, and at the same time, also putting in all the power wiring to power all of those gas pumps. Should be a doddle. And I think I missed one, didn't I? Yeah, I don't... Did I? Ah, yeah, no, never mind. I put in the gas pipe for that. I just didn't put in the power wire. All right, let's fast forward a couple of minutes until all the gas pumps are in place. I think we're ready to start the vacuuming process. We've sealed off the entire thing all the way around. So this inside area here should be its own separate gas environment. We connect those two up. Damn it. Uh, give me power for a second. I don't overwrite that cable. And the gas pumps start up. They start sucking the gases out. And coal gets delivered to all the uh, coal generators. That brings us, well, 1.2 kilo, or 2.2. 2.4 kilowatts, dear lord. My brain. I think I may have been at this for a while. All right, uh, gases are getting extracted at a rapid pace, and we're going to go in across the top, and we're going to make sure we've got plenty of space to go down the other side. Well, this is going on, and we're vacuuming the place out and building around it. Actually, how is that vacuuming going? It seems to be going pretty well. Gas pressure is down to MCG, MG. Yeah, we're, we're pretty close, actually, on both fronts. At the same time, we do have a printing pod activation, and it's a good one as well. Thimble reed seeds. Now, I'm pretty sure we brought some back, but I haven't actually gotten around to planting them. I really should. Uh, though we did also encounter another problem. You see, at one point we got those uh, those eggs. Where was it? Uh, yeah, these slickster eggs. Well, it wasn't just those slickster eggs. We got, we got two batches of slickster eggs. And the problem was, when the first ones 
came in, I just left them sitting there at the gate for a while, and it basically stifled all the fish. So we've lost a whole bunch of them. We're down to ooh, about 80 fish. We used to have 300, so 80 fish is a big drop because it stifled the fish and they stopped reproducing until I got rid of them. And we've only got about five eggs in storage. Basically, it's eaten into our food production heavily because we were depending quite nicely on those fish. So we're going to have to maybe crank open another stone hatch farm again. The reason being, we're out of food. Uh, we've got meat and barbecue and berry sludge. We're going to have to let everyone start eating the berry sludge again because... Well, we don't really have a choice. We don't have any other foods that they can chow down on. At the same time, we're going to open back up this ranch and we're going to fill it full of granite. We've copied and pasted over all the settings, but not only that, we have a bunch of stone hatches here that fell out of this and that should bring us up to speed pretty quickly. That should get that ranch up and running almost immediately. Yeah, just one of those handy little things of having those, uh, leaving the extra hatches there. I know there's ways to automate the killing of those hatches, but I kind of like them as an emergency reserve for instances like this. Uh, we could also do a bit of a cull to grab ourselves some more meat, but oh my god, look at all of that. That is what you call a lot of plastic and a lot of reed fibre. 105 units of reed fibre, 20 tonnes of plastic. That is ridiculous. All for the price of some dirt, of which we have 555 tonnes. I think we'll be fine. And look at them all. Oh, I, I never hooked these up to any, like to dump power onto the grid because he needs to use transformers and go through a bunch of effort and we just don't need it i suppose is the, what i'm trying to say oh let's double check this how are you doing you are still beautiful excellent so that's actually still providing us all our power and down here we should have this hatch hey guys anyone want to want to get on this anyone come on after all of that in less than a cycle we now have a, a ranch with seven stone hatches ready to go all fed and just starting to get groomed ah, i love this team they are solid right about now Oh, also we've got uh, two shear- we had to go to switch to two shearing stations. It's just there was too many critters. You couldn't sh uh, shave them all or shear them all in one place. 73 critters? Oh, that's including the eggs. Uh, there, there's a lot. There's a lot one way or the other. Anyway, down here. Uh, gases have all- Oh, yeah, I messed up your app. There's a layer of water along the bottom, which means this gas pump is only drawing from this one tile. That's what's slowing this down. Ugh, what a mess. That's uh, fine. It'll take another minute or two. In the meantime, we're going to start insulating in this. This is where we're going to be putting in our reactor. And the thing about reactors now is they give off so much radiation. It is just incredible. So we're going to want to use plastic tiles. So what you can do is put in plastic tiles around here and insulate the whole thing, though. We should probably give ourselves some ways around and maybe put in the reactor first. I want to basically wire it up and put in all the plugs before I drop in the or cover the whole thing in plastic. So finally, after all this time, we get to stick in the research reactor. There we go. Then we just have to hook this up. Now, here is the like all of these steam turbines will start collecting steam out of this room eventually. And when they do, we want that water to be fed right back into the reactor. We'll give it a little bit of a, a coil up and back like that. That way all the water, there's like a little bit of a stockpile of water in case there's any interruptions in flow. At the same time, we should, oh, we should probably get some sort of storage tank over here as well. Hmm, let me think for a minute. I don't want to put it in just yet, but we're going to have to have something feed on water onto this. At least to boot it up in this in the beginnings. At the beginnings, these steam turbines aren't, aren't going to be on, so we need to have some clean water coming in to get the reactor started. Oh, and we're probably going to want to hook up some automation to the reactor so we can turn it off. I'm thinking, yeah, we'll use steel just in case anything goes horribly, horribly wrong. And we'll put you down to there and put in a switch. To feed this reactor, we're going to put in an auto sweeper and we're going to have a conveyor receptacle. Both made of steel, of course, otherwise they would immediately break. Uh, also, we've got to make sure that this thing, you can turn it on and then we can just walk away. We cannot have our duplicants coming in here because they'll immediately get radiated, sick, fall over and die. Uh, it's just, there's going to be so many rads in here. There's going to be 2,000 rads or something crazy. So let's just not mess this up. Uh, you actually could probably go there. That would be better. I want to be really careful about this before we start it up. So I'm double and triple checking everything. Also, I think we can get rid of all of the gas pump stuff. All of that can go. Uh, no one break the vacuum seal. Anyone breaks the vacuum seal, I shoot you. Uh, no. Okay, I won't shoot you, but I'll do something horrible to you, like, I don't know, exile you somewhere. All right, let's uh, clean out the gunk and then in install all the plastic. This weird scaffolding looking thing is because I'm not really sure exactly how much plastic we're going to need. We're going to at least need at least three layers to block the radiation. If you're wondering why I'm using plastic, it's to do with how much rad gets blocked by different materials. For example, this sedimentary rock is only blocking 56%. 
Uh, igneous rock blocks 60%, plastic blocks 68%, and ceramic here only blocks 52 So the weakest I've got on hand is ceramic or mafic blocks 52%, and the strongest I've got is the plastic at 68 Of course, you can't put plastic touching right up against the reactor. That would be bad. It would melt. But we can put the layers of plastic around this uh, insulated layer, which I probably shouldn't have used sedimentary rock now that I'm looking at it. But you know what? It's too late. We're committed. It's fine. All right, that looks like a proper encasement for our reactor, though I might want to put on another layer of plastic. Just, yeah, just a little scooch more. Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we'll go all the way down. The thing is, we want to put in a farm across here. That will become more obvious later. For now, we'll worry about the reactor. The farm will come later. But this area down here is where we're going to sort of let some radiation come out to uh, help with mm, mutation pro problems later. Yeah, it really seems like kind of weird to say mutation out loud as a good thing. All right, now uh, we're going to have this water come down here and fill up this liquid tank. I deleted the old liquid pipe because of course I did, but that will come down here and fill up this tank and that'll give us five tons of water that we can use to feed this reactor to at least get it started. We won't need that much, but it's nice to have a little bit of spare water there in case anything goes horrifically wrong. Actually, another thing I should probably do is I would like a way to be able to dump more water in here just in case anything goes wrong. So let me think for a second about where I'd put that. I think we're almost ready. We've got the water in, we've got the reactor there, we've got enriched uranium located here. We can throw that into the conveyor loader, which will get fed down into this system. Uh, Power-wise, we have a bunch of coal generators here ready to kickstart the whole system. And once it's up and running, it'll be self-powering, as in the power from the steam generators will run through here and feed the system and get all the basics running. At that point, it should just keep running. Now, I do want to put in some naphtha here, put in a second liquid lock. The only thing we're missing here is if we put in a gas vent in this section. What I want to do is make sure there is a, a, a vacuum seal between these two areas. The reason being, this is going to get very hot, this naphtha. It's going to be, well, it's already 100 degrees, but it's going to go up to about 200 degrees, and I don't want that heat leaking out. So we're going to have a double liquid lock with a vacuum seal in the middle, just the most solid, stable, reliable way of making sure that the steam in here does not escape or affect anything outside of it. And, uh, yeah, we, we left the, the beta hive down here. Eh, whatever. I figure it's now safe and locked away just in case we mess something up somewhere else. And the temperature down there is it's just fine. It'll be grand. I hope... Actually, do they have a radiation limit? I don't think so. You know what? They'll be really happy. They'll be surrounded by rads. There is only one last thing to do. And that is to run a pipe from here all the way up to the top of the map. This is going to be for our nuclear waste. That nuclear waste is going to have to get sent all the way up here somewhere, and we've got to figure out where we're going to put it and how we're going to get it there. I'm thinking we stick it over here somewhere, and we're going to store it up and use the rad from it to power our rocketry program. This is just a standard, standard infinite storage unit. What we're going to do here is put in one blob of liquid that will get pushed out of the way every time the nuclear waste tries to come in, and it'll just keep cramming more and more nuclear waste in there. I don't normally use infinite liquid storage. I try and avoid it, but this just allows us to generate so many rads, and we're going to need all those rads for the nuclear engines and for the diamond compressors that we're going to need to knock out one of the achievements for Mine the Gap. So, yeah, I'm kind of okay with that. I mean, otherwise we could just dump the stuff into space. It just, otherwise, then we'd have to make the reactor up in space. Things that get really annoying. So I think this is just a, a, a decent compromise. Well, one I'm willing to accept. Now, uh, we also are going to have to run a pipe the whole way from the bottom of the map up. So that should be fairly straightforward. Well, straightforward with a few lefts and rights here and there. Now, we are going to have to prime it a little bit. So we're going to stick in a liquid pump here, throw in a tiny little bit of naphtha and use that as our little agent that uh, gets in the way and gets pushed out of the way every time nuclear waste shows up. And here we go, liquid naphtha. There, there, how much is that? You know what, I think that's enough. About 15 kilos. Grant. And that liquid gets sucked up and spit out across. Damn it, damn it. Why is it going down that way? And oh my god, I put it on the wrong thing, didn't I? One moment. The question is, can the duplicates get there in time to stop the blobs? Okay, and... Oh, ho, 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 ho. And that one as well. Perfect. Now we just have to get them off this independent line and into that. Should be no problem. You know what? We can just go like this, right? And they should all just flow where we need them to go. Oh, yeah, all part of the plan. Sure, sure, all part of the plan.
And with both of those in there, if we check under the liquids overlay, we should see, yes, one blob of naphtha. But when we stick in some nuclear waste in there, it'll, uh, it'll fix that up. All right, back to activating the reactor. I think, I think we're ready. We've got all of the piping done. We've got all of the power cables installed. Uh, we've got the automation ready to go. All we have to do is flick a switch and that turns on. Uh, this is set to 45. That's set to off for now. Yeah, I think we're about ready to fire this up. Just one thing before we do. I want to give have uh, some chores lined up for our duplicates so they're not doing anything or not being lazy. So we're just going to run a whole bunch of plastic ladders right up there. Well, we should have probably done this a while ago, but this should speed up transport dis transport times. In fact, we might just install a bunch of plastic tiles everywhere. What's the run speed plus 50%? Ooh. You know what that means, right? We... We can install a whole bunch of those everywhere. Why not? Uh, give me one second while I queue up a little bit of work for them. There we go. Several tons of plastic applied. Oh, and we can deconstruct that. Okay, time to turn this on. All right, this should be fairly straightforward. We get this here. We go to... Ah, manufactured material. Perfect. That all gets fed in there. All right, uranium is going to come down here. End up in this conveyor receptacle. And then it's going to get shunted into the nuclear reactor. Well, it will once we turn this on. And it should chuck in 60 kilos. Whoa, 140? Yeah, okay, so 60 of the enriched uranium has been used. The other 80 is kept in reserve. Now, you'll notice over here, this is what feeds the water in. So this is feeding in the water. Oh, and there drops a bunch of it right there. Now what happens is the water in here goes up, I think it's to 300 degrees based on what we have. 3, 8, yeah, there we go. About 400 degrees before it gets spit out and down here. Now, there is ways to meter the water into this, so you can actually restrict the amount of water and get a hotter water and hotter nuclear waste out of it. We're not doing that, and oh my god. What were you doing in there? What? Why? You know what? There we go. In fact, we'll just make sure that only people can go out. How long were you in there, and how much radiation did you get? 76 rads, because it's 7,000 rads in there. Well, that would explain it. Just don't go in there anymore. Jesus. All right, now you'll notice here when it came to the edge of this, it's 9,000 to 10, oh my God, it's 12,000 rads in the center. Well, out here, if we had it just left uh, the layer of sedimentary rock, the it would be 4,000 rads by here, 3,000, 2,000. I mean, okay, you're looking at about 1,000 rads out to this far. And because we put in the layer of plastic, we managed to reduce it to 1,100 by there, 358, 100, 33, and now it's 29 rads. So it's about 20 to 30 rads all the way around the outside. So long as we keep people away from the couriers. This area here is heavily radiated, but that's on purpose. The reason that's so heavily radiated is we want crops. Uh, as well as that, this is made out of ceramic right here. These two tiles, uh, if we bring up the mineral overlay. Yeah, so these two are made of ceramic. Uh, that's to stop, to reduce the amount of radiation that's blocked. That way we get even more radiation out of here so that we can grow plants better. People should be able to hang off these ladders and tend to the crops without dipping down into the radiation and getting irradiated. I mean, it's not going to be pleasant up there, but it's not going to be as bad as standing in this stuff. And it discourages them from standing in it. Okay, and down here we're getting... Yay! It's actually working. Alright, what we've done here is... We're going to let this keep flowing until we've got a decent amount of radioactive waste down here. That radioactive waste will also cause all the water to evaporate to steam. Uh, for the time being, still plenty of water in our system. And this whole thing is filling up nicely. Let's just fast forward this a bit until all the water down here has turned to steam. This might take a cup, actually, not too much longer, to be honest. There's most of it now. What temperature we got in here? 105, 111. Okay, I think, I think we're about ready to start up on the next section of this. What we want to do is take this nuclear waste that's in here and pump it into our coolant loop. Now, the reason we want to use nuclear waste is, actually, this is a great time to demonstrate it. Nuclear waste has a specific heat capacity of 7.44, as in the amount of temperature it takes to, or amount of heat, mm, amount of energy it takes to convert it to increase or decrease the temperature of the liquid. Whereas if you look at water, it has a lower specific heat capacity of 4.179. This means that the nuclear waste is better at carrying heat around the place. And when we put it through an aquatuner, the aquatuner removes more heat from it. So we get more cooling out of it to go around our, our steam turbines. If we tried to use polluted water as a coolant for our steam turbines, it just wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to get enough out of it. However, we do need to fill up the loop. So let's just say, yeah, if you're below 2,000, 
you'll turn on. That means it should activate instantly. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to start pumping nuclear waste up. And the nuclear waste is going to send it center in the cooling loop. Now, it's boiling hot. Yep, I know. It's absolutely radiatingly hot, which is bad. But not the worst. You see, the thing is, it'll go around the loop, and then while it will stifle the generators at first, by the time it goes to the aqua tuner, it'll dump off some heat. Now, my testing on the side on a test map meant we should be able to get this running this way. Come on. We're going to need a, a bit more. Coal damage? What? Why was there coal damage? Okay, never mind. You should only activate if it's above 45C. Great, that coal damage is going to annoy me now. There we go. And all the excess polluted waste. Okay, so I think we're good for now. I'll make you if it's above 600. If the nuclear waste hits 600 in the pit in here, it'll grab in some more. But for now, I think we are fine. Oh, wait a minute. See that blob there? I want to make sure we could maybe fill that up. Second, we'll say below 600 kilos now. I'm just trying to fill in those gaps. And of course, I missed all the gaps I wanted to hit. Well, fooey. Eh, fine. We'll eventually get it. It'll take a little bit of effort. We'll get around to it in a bit. Oh, okay then. Let me fast forward this a bit until the steam engine is fully active. And fully active. It's only been a few cycles, but... You can see here the steam is about 190, 200 down here, but it actually cools down as you get further out. And eventually that should stabilize at about 200, well actually, but 197C or somewhere around there. I'm really annoyed that that pipe has the cold damage. I think what happened was the first initial blob of nuclear waste cooled down so much going through here that it froze after coming out of the aquatuner. Unfortunate. But it's fine. It's fine. Grand, all the stuff going through now is actually just about hitting temperature. As you'll notice here, it's coming out at 42, 43 degrees. And then it goes all the way around, and by the time it gets out to the far end, it's 56. Another quick trip through the aqua tuner, and it's down to 42, 43. So soon it's going to be starting to hit the cutoff point where it won't even need, a, it won't need to be on constantly. Still pretty close, though. Just, if you were trying to use polluted water here, it wouldn't work unless you had two aqua tuners. The nuclear waste allows us to get away with just using one aqua tuner, which makes this whole thing just a little bit more simple to set up. Now, over here, we have started putting in the crops that we're trying to mutate. And, uh... Yeah, they're, they're going to be well radiated. Now, you'll notice I didn't use hydroponic styles. There's a reason for that. But once, according to, where is it? GMA OK, successfully analyze at, one, at least one seed of all mutatable plants. We have to mutate all of these seeds. Problem is, say, thimble reed requires polluted water. Sleet wheat requires clean water. Uh, some of them require different nutrients, all sorts of things. And we'd have to go down and empty out all the pipes and all that. No. If we just use the use regular farm tiles, our duplicates will have to bring along the bottles of the required liquids, but it does mean that when we're done, we're done and we shouldn't have to come along and change anything. Well, I hope. I could be wrong on that front. But as well as that, we would have to repipe everything every time, which would also be a pain in the butt. So I think this way is just easier for us to get the mutated plants. Now, uh, allergic reaction. Oh, yeah, they have allergies, don't they? Okay, fine, we will queue up some more allergy medicine. We, we we hired a dupe with allergies. That was not my brightest moment. We'll give you, we'll make you 10 tablets. That'll keep you clean for another 10 days. And down here, we've uh, started up the new fish farms again. We're back up to 119 fish. And at the same time, we've got 18 eggs ready to go. I think we'll be back up to a solid sized fish portfolio in no time at all. I am, of course, way, way, way over time. And sorry about the delay getting this one out. This uh, turns out building a nuclear reactor and meeting all our needs was a little bit trickier than I anticipated. Uh, we've also stuck in a farm station down here so that we can apply the fertilizer buffs. So let's see, are you getting buffed? There we go, micronutrients applied. Uh, so this should speed up the growth so that we can get those mutated plants even quicker. Farmer's Touch doubles the growth speed. So this will grow twice as fast, meaning we'll have twice as many chances to get seeds out of them or mutated seeds. As well as that, Jerome here is not the worst farmer. They've been dedicated to it for quite some time and they're on 15 agriculture. Wait, how are they so... Their skill level is plus six, green thumb plus three, improved farming plus two, crop tending plus two, and improved farming... Okay, so their skill level is only six for base. That's actually kind of atrocious. Well, never mind. They've got a 15 in agriculture, which means they will have a plus 50% seed chance every time they harvest something. Meaning we should hopefully get seeds rather quickly, and because of the just huge quantities of radiation, we should be able to get the seeds we need quickly and efficiently. Oh, uh, one last thing that I didn't cover here. This uh, reactor eats about six kilos of water per second, and we have all of the outflow from these steam turbines getting fed up into it. So you'll notice the way it's all getting fed up there and around. 
This means that all the steam in here is just getting constantly recycled. Otherwise, you'd keep adding more and more steam pressure in there, and once it gets to above 100 kilos, the research reactor can't spit out at it, the steam inside it, and it will just, you know, explode and blow up a bunch of stuff. Uh, the reason we use plastic is plastic is the one of the best, or is tied as one of the best materials for stopping radiation in this game. Don't ask me what the, the, the real-life applications of that are. Lead is the exact same amount of radiation blocking. It'll block 68%, but we don't have lead. And we have lots and lots of plastic, and we can make, make so much plastic. So that's why we went that direction. I think this worked out pretty much okay. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.